Hey chefs, um, this week we have a great show ready for you. Um, man, we uh, we cover a lot in this one. This um, is like that uh, period of time where like we finished recording the album. Obviously, it's been like two weeks now. Yeah. Um, but we are just relaxing. Like, a lot of work led up to that album, and we put a lot of work into it, and now we're just relaxing. So last week and this week, we're just... We don't talk a lot during the week. So we're just chilling and catching up and hanging out. We probably should talk more. I guess. Like, you're like my best friend and everything, so... (laughs) Well, I'll talk. Oh, we'll talk. Okay. (laughs) This This has been a wake-up call. Yeah. We don't talk enough during the We week don't talk enough. When we're not together. It's true. Why don't we text each other? Anymore? I don't know. You, you, <laughs> like, you always, you just message me on Facebook. No texting. There's no such thing as texting. No, but you know what? I don't text many people. I feel like I, I use Facebook Messenger almost exclusively. Yeah. I feel like Jess is, like, the only person I really text. text. And everyone else is just because I've got... Facebook up. Well, because you're on your computer all day because yeah. you stay at home all day. Yeah. Like, I get it. It's yeah. fine. It's not like I don't have a messenger app. Yeah. You know, so it's all, it's good. I don't care. But if you want me to text you, I'll No, text it's fine. You. you don't have to text me. <laughs> only only if you have really uh, something really special to say. Or something I don't want Mark, Buck, Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg to hear. Yeah. yeah. To see or hear. Like yeah. when we plot the downfall of Facebook. Yeah. Like you can text me then that. I'll text that to you because I don't want uh, the powers that be to understand what's going on. Right. So, while we are plotting the downfall of Facebook, um, make sure you visit us at uh, superdivorceme.com. While you are there please make sure to add your email address to our email list because if you do, you will get a free three-song album drop. Three P. The three P is what we're calling it. The, you know, instead of an EP, it's a three P. So over the course of uh, several days, you will receive three brand new songs from Super Divorce. Um... So definitely do that. Add your email. We won't spam you. You'll just get emails for a couple days, and then what? I think maybe once a week. Yeah, then once a week, just to once let you a know week, what's you'll going just on. get a what's a uh, hey what's up. Uh, you can also check us out on Facebook. dot com slash super divorce, Instagram at super divorce band. Although we don't use it, Snapchat at super divorce. Although we don't use it, and Twitter at super divorce which we do use because it's linked to our facebook so we post all the stuff on there yeah uh if you want to find mr nicholas villars on social media you can search at nicholas villars on pretty much anything and just see what happens (laughs) see if he comes up if If, he does that's him yeah and if you don't see me when you search that name, then that means I'm not on that platform. Yeah, so if you're looking on Grinder, stop, because yeah. he's not on there. He's uh, married. Yeah. Hands off. Sorry, if you want to find sorry. me on social media, you can find me on Facebook, uh, or you can find me on Instagram at Bender Butt. One word, last name, and a butt. Uh, and with that, we introduce you to this week's podcast. Enjoy, chefs. Enjoy. We are not getting a divorce. We are not getting a divorce. Hey, man, welcome to the Super Divorce Supercast. This is Nicholas and Bender. We were just uh, discussing some of the reactions we've gotten so far. Yeah, a few songs because obviously we haven't released the whole thing yet. Obviously not. Uh, but we did release um, a free three-song download. Now, is that is that uh, no matter when you sign up for that, is it um, does it come like one a day? Yeah, or one every other day. Yeah, you get like your when you you sign up, then you get like your confirmation email, and once you confirm then you'll be sent the first song like immediately after that. Okay. And there's like a little bit of info in that first email Uh about that track and about our recording. And then it's just kind of like, you know, come back tomorrow, check your inbox and your next song will be here. And so 
there's one a day for three days. Okay. So that's what I thought. Yeah. I mean, a couple people I've you know have been like, oh, I got Predator, and I'm like, oh well, keep an eye out because mm-hmm. you'll get more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we we released a three song demo drop, if you will, uh, which I have had people message me that I did not expect to pick up, you know, the music or whatever. Yeah. And people message me and tell me how much they enjoy it and how good it is. Yeah, the reaction's been just like through the roof positive so far. So it's mm-hmm. really exciting. Yeah. Looking forward to getting everything out there and, you know, hearing what people think of the whole thing all together. Yeah. Because it is going to be, you know, just an awesome fun album to listen to i can't wait until people are like driving around listening to it and right they start like attaching it to certain things that are going on in their lives you know and all that stuff so it's i'm looking forward to it definitely i mean i've already you know i have gotten to the point uh or i i thought to myself the other day when i was in the car that like when we were recording that album there was a lot of stuff that we would like record but like be laughing at you know hysterically mm-hmm. thinking like oh my god this is kind of a ridiculous idea yeah but you know let's do it anyways uh and then you know you listen back to it a couple times and listen back and i would laugh or josh would be laughing or you know we'd all be laughing together and but now i you know i've had it pretty much constantly in my car i've listened to some other stuff but it's the it's the cd in my car so if my phone doesn't immediately hook up it plays um and i've gotten to the point where like nothing feels silly anymore Mm -hmm. when you listen to the music all of the stuff that we thought was hilarious and silly in the studio it doesn't feel silly now it feels like a okay like that's just how it is it's part of the album when you listen to that album cover to cover, you know, over and over, it just, just the, the, uh, the range of sounds and, you know, mm. that you get out of it is so awesome. And it, none of it, none of it feels like a joke anymore. No, it, a lot of it feels very fun. Yeah. And kind of whimsical. Yeah. But not like we were trying to parody anything. You right. Know? It's just we had a good time and I think it, it comes through when you listen to it. Yeah. It's well, the, the one part, um, on bad shot, the Braun Strowman yell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My dad thought that was hilarious, but he loved it. Right. You know? So it's, it's just like, I think certain things will maybe catch people off guard on uh-huh. the first listen, but not in a bad way. No. Like, that's not something you hear in most songs. Right. But then you're glad it's there. So yeah. I think the fact that we were so open to any and every idea that anyone had when we were making it, just it made it very unique. There right. There was definitely no... We knew we wanted to make like a, a synth pop album. That was it. But you could do so much within that realm. It's just like... It opened things up completely. Yeah, so. I mean, for anybody who's heard Predator, obviously my backing vocals are not necessarily something you hear often nowadays. Yeah. Um, but I think they fit. It works. They do. I mean, it just, they, it's what you would have heard in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Like, there are songs like that. Plenty of songs like yeah. that. I love all of your parts in the album. Thank uh, you. Yeah. I'm just, very excited about all of it. I feel like it's just like this... It would have been a great, you know, album had, you know, had things just stayed the way they were. But, like, I think your stuff just gives it a... It takes it to another level, you know? Yeah. It adds this other dimension to it and gives it a character that it wouldn't have had if it was just me. And yeah. I think when you come in because you're doing something so radically different from what I'm doing in most spots. Even even when you're singing, your our voices are very different. Yeah. So um, I think it, it gives it, like I said, that character where here's something that you're not going to hear from most bands. Mm-hmm. 
a lot of a lot of bands um, even with like multiple vocalists I think oftentimes nowadays anyway especially within like the the emo or screamo scene if you would have like the two vocalists set up seems like a lot of times they'd they'd maybe have like a similar thing going on or it would be like one guy screaming and one guy singing right you're not doing that you've got like it's not like you're just screaming in the background it's like your voice is coming through in a very in all of its uniqueness and so i i'm really glad that you jumped in there and did it yeah having never done it before never done it yeah and once uh yeah again if, if anybody's heard predator if anybody's heard all three songs so far um all of the backing vocals i recorded all of those just in one day and it was aside from some group vocals on the first sleep star well second yeah quote sleep star ep first that i was involved with Aside from some group vocals, I've never recorded vocals ever before until that day in the studio. And I did all of those backup vocals, the, the, the B-52s type vocals, the um, scary voices on mm-hmm. expensive stopwatch. All of that is me. None of that is like computer, even the howl yeah. at the beginning of the song. And then you know, all of the singing parts on holding hands. Like that was all just like, Hey, I'm going to try to sing. Here we go. Let's do it. Yep. And that's what happened. And there it is. And that's, and that's all, that's all she wrote. It's pretty awesome. That was one of the most fun days in the studio. Yeah. Like I think I've ever had, even playing drums Mm -hmm. is fun, but it it gets really stressful. Yeah. After a while. But just singing like that all day was great so much fun well we haven't done a beer me in a while no we haven't so uh why don't we go ahead and do that today we are going to be drinking golden road brewing palisades pineapple american wheat ale with pineapple and apricot made in la i love this can (laughs) yeah it's a great can yeah it's fantastic it's it's a very retro-ish looking can. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's fantastic. I was going to wait to say anything. Like, I had one of these the other night. Yeah. And I usually do not go for, like, any type of fruity beer. Mm-hmm. If it's got, like, any sort of fruit. But this stuff this is, is really good. This is really good. It's not... Like the pineapple and apricot, it's not overpowering at all. A lot of the fruit stuff, I think, oh, just gets so like good. into the realm of almost cough syrup. Sometimes, know? yeah. But this is like very light, and it's a great summer beer. Yeah, holy crap. So is... if you can get your hands on some uh, while we still have some hot weather going, yeah, go out and find it. Mucho goodo. Um, it's got... Like, a, the top half is, like, a sort of washed-out pink color, kind of, with some some lighter pink designs going on, like some geometric stuff. Mm-hmm. And then the bottom half is kind of like a, what you'd see driving down the road in L.A. with The a, Sunset Strip. Yeah, with palm trees and, I guess, some, some supposedly some buildings poking through. I'm not really sure yeah. what that's supposed to be. Kind of stylized, yeah, and it, yeah, it's it's a can, so it's very it's very nice. This is very good. I feel like uh, pineapple pineapple is obviously a very citrusy fruit, and apricot is very mild. Yeah, you know, it's sweet but mild. So I feel like, I mean, what a pair! Yeah, pineapple a- and apricot. That's just like you get enough sweet citrus but it cancels out with the sweet from the apricot and then you blend all the with the hops in the beer and yeah oh man it's so good great combination of flavors so track some of this down golden road brewings palisades pineapple with the sweet can Mm. it's a sweet beer it's too sweet made in los angeles yep too sweet beer Mm. That's really good. Probably the 
best beer we've had in a while. Yeah. Are we going to have this on Saturday? I would like to get some more, yeah. 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 That would be a good beer to have mm-hmm. on Saturday. I meant to ask you, so I guess you're... you're Tailgating, yeah. at least, yeah. Because yeah. I actually have... Uh, I'm supposed to hang out with Nancy in the evening. We're going to go to the Oregon. Mm-hmm. And I had plans to do that, like, uh, a while ago. Yeah. Um, and then... Just a couple of days ago, Zam asked me if I wanted to go to a pool party with her coworkers. So I think it's going to be like a couple hours with you guys, a couple mm-hmm. hours with Zam, and a couple hours with Nancy, like all in the same. Yeah. Just and just drinking, just yeah. drinking all day <laughs> long. So we'll see if I even survive. Yeah. But we're going. Uh, I think we're leaving here at one. So I'll probably like. You know what? I assume we'll all like meet up and everything, so I'll probably head down there with everybody and then like leave around like four. Mm-hmm. So a good like three hours or so. You know, maybe two and a half, like depending mm-hmm. on how long it takes to get down there. Two and a half, and then leave around four, four thirty. Come home, get ready, go to the pool party, drink more. Did you go last year? Nope, I've never been. You've never been. I didn't think you had. Never been. But the group is usually so big. It's tough to remember who all went yeah, I'm sure. each time. If anybody doesn't know what we're talking about, oh, yeah. this Saturday uh, is the annual Jimmy Buffett concert at Riverbend. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow is the annual Jimmy Buffett concert. Uh, and the concert doesn't start until 8 o'clock, but the drinking <laughs> starts at 1 o'clock. Yeah. Very early. <laughs> And we won't even be the first ones to get there. I'm sure. I mean, there are people who are probably, they've probably got their campers pulled up right now. Right. Some of them. Yeah. It's it's quite an event if you've never been. If you ever get a chance to, you should at least go and hang out with all the parrot heads during the day yeah. because it's just a group of people who just don't give a shit. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just hanging out all day, drinking, grilling. You could probably go and just walk by people and... You're going to get offered food and beer and... That's what I... I will absolutely, weed, like, get... Sure. I will absolutely take some food if someone offers it to me. Yeah. You yeah. know what we should do, though? We should open all the car doors and play fucking Super Divorce <laughs> and see if people yeah, like it and should. then be like, oh, this is our music, mm-hmm. like... That would be a good idea. It's, yeah. Yeah. We need to get little... We need to get, like, business cards, too, to... With our yeah. email on them. Yeah. And that's people. Ideas. Ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. Um, I, I was going to say, it's funny, because they'll have cops, they'll have bike cops riding up and down all the, the lanes, like in the, it's just a huge gravel parking area. Yeah. Like next to Coney Island. Right. We've been there before. Oh, yeah. War tour. Yeah. So it's just like, but everyone's. You know, there are tents set up, and I mean, we're taking our grill, so we're going to be nice. grilling out there, and we do that every year. But there will be people, I mean, you just, you think that maybe people would be trying to conceal stuff, but they just don't. <laughs> even when, even, I mean, the cops are riding by, they don't they don't care. They're just like blazing up? Yeah. Oh my God. I mean, God. there are people smoking, and it's just... You can smell it in the air oh, very sure. heavily in some spots. <laughs> Even during the during the concert, it's like it's the classic concert for that. Really, mm-hmm. you know, when it's like you know sunset at River Bend and just like all these people are drunk, and then you smell it, and then sure enough, someone's handing you a joint. <laughs> you know, <and> just <laughs> take a take a puff and pass it on. Oh God. I think well, uh, a certain somebody we know will be all up in that. Yeah. Anybody, mm-hmm. anybody that offers it to her, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> she will be all about it. Yeah. God love. Her. <sighs> yeah. There are a couple guys that um, our friend Tyler was referring to as 
the good guys a few years ago <laughs> because it was just like all throughout the night. It was like joint after joint <laughs> <laughs> like producing from out of nowhere. That's funny. Just sharing the love. Yeah, I think it's going to be time. It'll be fun. Yeah. Oh, so uh, let's see. Yeah, we got all this band stuff going on, and um, we were contacted uh, recently by a music video producer, director, um, about doing a project that's pretty exciting. You hear that? We were contacted by somebody that wants to make a music video for us. Who does really good work. Who does really good work. Yeah. So, suck it, <laughs> everybody, I guess. Suck it times in the past when we yeah. had to, like, message a million people and get no response. Yeah. Yeah. Suck it past <laughs> us. You should have been making synth pop records the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's exciting. That's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, he will probably produce what ends up being our second music video yeah is what we have sort of already uh landed on yeah. with that but because he's uh he's kind of booked up he's actually he told me he's getting ready to go to vietnam oh. for like two weeks to do a documentary huh uh about like i guess they have a real problem in the area where he's visiting with uh, that part of the ocean in Vietnam being hmm. overly polluted. Oh. So making a documentary about it, and he's the one shooting it. Interesting. And then he wants to come back and do a music video for us. Very so cool. Like, Very cool. Yeah. I, uh, speaking of Vietnam, I just watched uh, the Neil Bloomcamp of uh district nine and Chappie. Mm -hmm. he's got new short films that he's been releasing and i don't know if it's like to gain funding to make full-length features or he's just doing it because he doesn't give a fuck or like what but one of them the second one he's released is called firebase and it's about the vietnam war oh. and uh the gist of it is that the U.S. bombs the crap out of the jungle, kills this dude's wife and kid, uh, and then it pushes this this Vietnamese you know farmer to the brink, and he becomes like the river god, mm -hmm. and they there's like this the Omega event where he like kills like ten thousand soldiers, like just lifts them all up into the sky and that's mm -hmm. it they just like go to heaven and like he like dismantles and like 13,000 vehicles you know and it all just goes up hmm. way because he's like so fucking crazy it's it's really interesting really gory which is awesome yeah. like some really cool effects for like a short film like this dude it's a half an hour long and it's just crazy to me that, like, this guy can be like, hey, I want to make a 30-minute movie, and I don't know what kind of budget it's on, but if this exact thing was two hours long, mm -hmm. all of this, all of the effects, everything, it all just fits. It's all fine. No need to upgrade anything. Yeah. No nothing. Like, it is a high-quality 30-minute film really good lots of gore and the first one that he did is called Raka, and it's got fucking sigourney weaver in it huh so like i don't know <laughs> like dude's got connections i guess that's cool but hmm. speaking also of new music videos uh you know who's got a new song and a new album coming out who kesha oh i saw that she had a new video hell yeah, yeah. Watched it, loved it. I mean, it's just a Kesha video. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, this is the greatest video of all time. Yeah. I mean, as much as I love Kesha. But it's probably good to see her back in it's action. It's great to you know? see her back in action. The song is good. 
It's really, it's exactly what I expected from her at this point. Mm -hmm. Uh, After spending two weeks making a pop album, I think the third chorus could be a little bigger, but... Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But I still think it's a great song. I honestly, honest to God, I teared up a little bit the first time I heard it. But it's great. So her new, she's got a whole new album coming out August 11th. Hmm. Well, there you go. It's good news. Yeah, I'm stoked. Considering how many years has it been since she was able to release anything? I think four. Since, not that she, yeah, not that she uh, didn't want to make music or anything. It's been four years because she has not been allowed to release anything. And unfortunately, all of that stuff still pretty much stands. She's still signed to... uh, Kimasabi Records, so mm-hmm. her abuse. She's still signed to the label of her abuser. However, basically, her court case failed completely. Mm-hmm. But Sony promised her that she could make new music without collaborating with Dr. Luke. Yeah. So he is still going to benefit off of her next three albums. He'll still make mm-hmm. money off of it and everything, but she doesn't have to work with him. Well, take the good with the bad. Yeah, at least, yeah, at least they didn't uh, force her back to right. the studio with them. It's yeah. it's so. yeah. It, her contract is for three more albums on on his label, and then you know who knows what'll happen after that. But she doesn't have to work with him anymore, uh, she, and she's got her fans and everything. So I have a feeling if she has any control over it. Because I know some recording contracts will, they'll have like a, you know, sort of like restrictions on how soon after one release you can do another. Yeah. But I would assume she's going to be right on that date. As soon as she's allowed to release her next album, she probably will. So she can get these three out of the way and move on. I was wondering, and I was wondering what, uh the deal with with all of that was and i you know i looked it up or and found out or a friend of mine posted an article about it on facebook but uh because the whole her new song doesn't like slam dr luke like in a negative way Mm -hmm. but it's all about how he treated her and just and then how she just prays that he changes his ways and finds you know peace and like mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff so she's taking the high road yeah but she's still kind of slamming him a little bit there's one line in the song that's something to the effect of you and i both know everything i could tell people mm-hmm. or something like that and i'm just like you get it girl mm-hmm. <laughs> i love her <laughs> i just want her to be happy <laughs> Oh, it's um, good stuff. It's a good song. We'll listen to it before I leave. Sounds good. I feel like I had something. Uh... Oh, the uh, fucking new Spider-Man movie. Yes, is... Homecoming. Yeah, I've been hearing great things so far. As so. have I. Yes, I. Uh, obviously, I haven't seen it. We went and saw It Comes at Night the other day. Not that great. No. Unfortunately. Very. It's, uh, it's just, it's in the vein of The Witch and The Black Coat's Daughter and It Follows and all of that and it just doesn't live up. Yeah. It's just not as good. I wanted so much more to be happening than what happened. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's shot beautifully. Yeah. The use of darkness is amazing. You know, the mystery behind it all is great for ten minutes, and then they, you know, drag it out for an hour and a half, and then don't give you any sort of, like, answers. And I'm not... I'm just not about that in movies. Like, The Witch doesn't really tell you anything, Mm -hmm. but it shows you enough... So you can fill in the blanks, and there's a sense of dread that way. 
Like, because you're left to your own imagination, but you, like, you still have, there's, like, a confines into which your imagination can roam. You yeah. know, it's kind of like this, this, or this, A, yeah. B, or C. But, uh, it comes at night. Didn't, yeah. didn't really live up. However, yes, I have heard amazing things about Spider-Man Homecoming. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> I've heard spectacular things as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think it's um it's nice to see that they actually got like a legitimately young actor to mm-hmm. play peter he's Parker. 22 it's still better than like you know andrew garfield i think was 27 when they cast him yeah. to play peter parker as a 16 year old and it's like and their whole i remember being just like left scratching my head because they they said they wanted to restart that series for the Amazing Spider Man when they did that reboot, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Well, we're starting it over because we don't want to continue with Tobey Maguire. We feel like he's kind of running out of time, so we want to start this whole thing over with, a, you know, a really young actor who's going to be able to play Peter Parker for a while." And like when they made the announcement, like I said, he was twenty seven. Right. So it's like, well, what at that point? how old was Tobey Maguire? Maybe like 35 or something like that. It's like, it's not, it's not like you went and cast a 15 year old. Right. You know, it's so, I just, those movies weren't very good. Anyway, in my opinion. Yeah. Nobody, don't ever argue with me about how much you love Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. He was fucking terrible. Yeah. He was a terrible Peter Parker, a great Spider-Man. I'll give him that. The banter and the, you know, the writing was good enough. I never saw Amazing Spider-Man 2, but God, after all the previews about the Sinister Six, like, ugh, did not want to see it anyways. I I love the Tobey Maguire movies, and I even think that the third one gets a little bit too much shit. Lindsay just, feels the same way as you do, and yeah. I do not agree. I hate the third one. <laughs> it's it's definitely the weakest by far yeah. of the three. Yeah. A huge step down from the second one. The second one is fantastic. Yeah, it, it really is. But, you know, I was just like, whatever. I mean, it was... I just, man... I, I couldn't do... Topher Grace as Eddie Brock. Oh God, no! Make... <laughs> Just the whole thing. You've got Foreman from that '70s show. Like, yeah. Why? He he's known. He can't. He honestly cannot play any role other than that type of character yeah. that he plays on that '70s show. Because even in uh, Predators. Mm-hmm. He has to play like the kind of weakling doctor. Yeah. And then, spoiler alert, at the end, he flips around and he's some like psycho surgeon, you know, who's like mutilating people. And I just like don't believe it <laughs> at all. Yeah. Well, it's because you. You hate to like typecast people. Right. But when he was. He was playing that character on that 70s show for years. Yeah. And that's what people got used to him as. And he he plays the part very, very well. So it's tough to like just say, okay, well, now you're Eddie Brock. And I totally buy it. Yeah. You're Especially a... when he's known in comics is when you when I hear Eddie Brock. I think of like, Buff. more like Brock Lesnar. Yeah. would have been a great Eddie Brock. Yeah. You know? Buff, athletic, dick. Yeah. Like, you know, not fun, like, buzz cut, you know, not that fucking spiked blonde yeah. whatever he had, you know, just, just terrible, terrible casting. And then, I mean, like, the the way they handled Venom made sense, considering that they cast Topher fucking Grace. Yeah. But, just imagine if they'd have cast Brock Lesnar yeah. or something <laughs> and then put the Venom symbiote on him. It would have been amazing, probably. Yeah. I'm not even so mad at Venom, although I, I am. Like, it's just terrible. I feel they just handled that poorly. I'm not even as mad at that as I am at Hobgoblin. Yeah. <sighs> that was... Let's take Hobgoblin and turn him into, like, an extreme sports guru. Yeah. With the, like, vibroblade, like, fine. 
because Hobgoblin has like a flame sword. Mm-hmm. Like I get it. I get where you're coming from, but God, that costume was just awful. In the original, I remember thinking that like Norman Osborn's Green Goblin was actually pretty cool. Even though it's quite the deviation from the source material. Right. I, at that point, the whole culture of comics in general, not really anything, even in, even in the comic books, was sticking true to like source material back right. then. And that was when you had like the new X-Men going on. They ditched all the old costumes. And it was like early 2000s. And they really wanted to make everything just like new and kind of extreme you know yeah just like ditch the cheesy old-fashioned stuff i mean they had the joke about it in the first x-men movie you know about wolverine oh when he like looks at the i can't remember the joke it's been so long since i've seen that movie he says something like you know it's something about yellow and black spandex better than yellow and black spandex or something yeah like yeah that, the suit know? he's like what what is this jumpsuits and the and scott i think oh, okay, cyclops yeah. i think turns around and says better than yellow and black spandex or yeah. some shit like that yeah there was a time and you can obviously see it from the the marvel movies uh pre iron man pre iron man marvel movies definitely tried to do that whole like we're gonna push things into a realistic direction yeah you know uh spider-man's costume was great but yeah they tried to push green goblin into a real place yeah um they i feel like they still nailed dr octopus oh yeah like sandman was great sandman was amazing yeah the great thing about you know why sandman was so great because he fucking looked exactly the way he looks in the comics Mm -hmm. thomas hayden church excellent casting yeah the costume was great like the haircut was great the effects were pretty good i mean all things considered he was perfect as sandman another thing that i don't really hear people talk about from the original is um cliff robertson was a perfect uncle ben Yes. And then Martin Sheen played him. No. In Amazing. It's Terrible. Like, no. Terrible. Because I will just... say I do not like Marissa Tomei as Aunt May in the new Spider-Man movies. Like what? Is she just going to get younger and younger? Like <laughs> No, but you know what? If they if they plan on carrying this out for a while, I could see her. The great thing about casting her is she could literally be playing Aunt May in 20 years. Yeah. If they're looking at the long game, you know. Right. And she's a good actress. Yeah, I mean, so, I like Marissa Tomei. I'm just yeah. like, I don't like... I mean, it's just... It, it's a little weird, but, you know... Because Aunt May is... I mean, it was weird enough when... I don't know who played her in Amazing. Yeah. Uh, Familiar Sally fa- Field. Sally Field. Yeah. Like, it was weird enough when Sally Field played Aunt May. Like... Yeah. Because she didn't look like she was about to die. Right. <laughs> like, that's, that's like... Uh, Aunt to May me. in the Tobey Maguire movies, perfect. Yeah. Whoever that woman was, nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> like... But in the comics, especially, well, previously, they've kind of modernized her. She's got, like, kind of a, you know, hot grandma. Yeah. With, like, the silver fox kind of deal, yeah, you know? She's... A little bit. They've, they've kind of brought her up to speed a bit, you know, but classically she's got like the gray bun. With like the knitting needles yeah, in it. Like yeah. kind of hunched over. Yep, all the time. Just, so yeah, it is weird to, to go from that to the lady in, in the first Spider-Man movie, I can't think of her name, who is, you know, maybe a little more capable Right, more spry. Yeah, and then you go to Sally Field, and then Marissa Tomei, and next will be like Megan Fox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like I under, I I get where they're coming from. It's just when you have a, a character, yeah, that has traditionally remained fairly unchanged yeah. for the amount of time that Aunt May has. Yeah, then it's it's weird, but like. It makes sense, movie-wise and all that, so I'm not, like, mad about it. But, yes, uh, Uncle Ben in the first movie, Mm -hmm. excellent. Yeah. Fantastic. 
killed it. Martin Sheen, not so much. No. He felt just a little cold to me. Yeah. You know? He always feels cold. Did you know Martin Sheen was in the Spawn movie? Who did he play in Spawn? Somebody, John Wynn or something like that. He's no, like the military that. general that sends Spawn, I can't remember his actual name. On uh, uh, is it Al Simmons? Al Simmons. He yeah. sends like Simmons out on this mission and then like kills him mm-hmm. and he becomes Spawn. And then the movie is about like him getting his revenge on. I remember watching that movie when it came out because I feel like if you, even if you didn't read the comics, if you grew up in the nineties, you thought Spawn, Spawn was, was shit. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was such a badass character. I've got, I think maybe the first thirty issues really of Spawn. Yeah. Um, they're on. They're in the 200s. Yeah, I, I know. Now. I, I couldn't tell you like anything about the interests sure, yeah. of the story. I'm but sure. I used to love trying to draw Spawn comics back back in the day. I thought uh, McFarlane was really cool. Mm-hmm. Because it was... Again, everything was just how extreme can we be. Right. And McFarlane's comic style was very extreme compared to a lot of <laughs> other comics at the time. Right. All the detail that he had. and you know. I tried watching the Spawn movie the other day. It's it's pretty bad. Like, I've always heard, like, it's bad, but uh, the Netflix, like, preview, you know how they do, like, little previews now? Yeah. Didn't make, it didn't look, like, that bad. I was like, okay, like, it's crow level. Yeah. You know, I was like, whatever, I can, like, handle that. And then you watch it, and yeah, like the effects aren't that bad and all that stuff. It's just the pacing of the movie is god awful. I like John Leguizamo. Yeah, as uh, whatever the clown violator. Yeah. yeah, yeah, hilarious. Like that's just like it, I feel like he regrets that role. I don't know. Have you ever seen the pest? No. I don't know if there's much John Leguizamo regrets in his career. <laughs> <laughs> but I like him. I think he's a I good like actor. I like John Leguizamo, too. I love him in Land of the Dead, too. Mm-hmm. I think he's awesome in that. That's getting a Scream Factory collector's edition. I just edition. saw that yesterday. So is Dawn of the Dead. Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. They announced, oh, that's cool. They announced both of them within I love two that days. Movie too. Yeah, the, For the Dawn of the people, Dead remake is great. People love to shit on Zack Snyder because it's fun. I don't think he's that bad. I'm gonna to be totally honest with you. I, I yeah, I he ju- I don't know. Yes, I I know what you mean. He I feel like he's just one step above mediocre overall. But mm-hmm. there are like I fucking love 300. I don't yeah. care. I love Sucker Punch. I don't care. Watchmen is great. It is when you when you're when you consider what he had to adapt into a movie. Watchmen is fucking awesome. I I had read Watchmen. Like, I got done reading Watchmen. I I still remember this, and my first thought was, someone needs to make this into a movie. And I like went online, and checked, and I was like, Watchmen movie. And I saw that there was one like coming out later that year, and I was like. Well, fucking A. <laughs> and, I, and then I saw it, and I was like, besides the ending, I thought it was fucking perfect. Yeah. Especially how true to the book a lot of the scenes were. Like, some of the shit, certain shots in that movie are exactly like panels from the comic, from the graphic novel. And, I mean, I, I don't know what the problem is, why people want to shit on it so much, because for condensing it down into a feature film that's released in theaters, I thought it was about as good as anyone's going to do with it. Right. So. Like, I don't, I don't know. But then, you know, he gets, so he, and he did Man of Steel and Dawn of Justice. Yeah. And like. Man of Steel, no. Nah. Yeah. Man of Steel. I don't know Steel, what happened there. Don't know what happened. Mm-hmm. Dawn of Justice, much better. Yeah. Like. I'm actually, I would say I'm a fan of that movie. I, yeah. I actively enjoy it. I, I've only seen it the one time, but I wasn't like, p- 
pissed off watching it or anything. I liked it. I thought yeah. it was good. Um, I kind I just think he. I don't know. It's almost like you think he has like Eli Roth syndrome, where mm-hmm. he starts out really, really awesome, and he just like is kind of like slowly puttering downhill. Well, he, was, he was an executive producer on Wonder Woman. Was he? Yeah. Which is that means you are you got a big role in yeah. the movie, so it's like, and that was amazing. So mm-hmm. I don't. Didn't well, I thought he stepped away from? I mean, he was an executive, mm-hmm. but didn't he have to step away for a while? Maybe he did. I know his name was still in the credits, though. Yeah, because I think he did a lot of it, but he he had to step away because okay. of his daughter's suicide. Oh, I didn't know. You didn't know that. that? No. A lot. Of, no. Wait. Justice League. He's directing Justice League. Uh huh. Right. Yeah, I believe so. This, okay. Yeah. He had. They brought in. Joss Whedon to finish directing Justice League. Really? And a lot of people were, like, talking about how excited they were that fucking Zack Snyder wasn't finishing it. Mm -hmm. And they were saying this knowing that the reason he's not finishing Justice League is because his daughter killed herself. Jesus. His, like, 17-year-old daughter committed suicide and... He even, uh, they kept it quiet for months, and he continued to direct. Yeah. And then finally decided to step away, so the DC and what Paramount mm-hmm. I, owns DC. I think so. Uh, they brought in. They had to find somebody else, but they you know released a statement like during this sensitive time, blah blah blah, like. Yeah. And people were commenting on it, talking about how, like, happy they were that his daughter killed herself so that he didn't have to direct the movie anymore. Jesus. And I was like, alright, that's fucking harsh. Yeah. Like, stop it. Don't do that. <laughs> but, yeah, that uh, that happened. Justice League mm. is being finished by Joss Whedon. That will... It'd be... Obviously, the scenario is horrible, but that's interesting. I didn't... Somehow that totally slipped by me. I hadn't heard that until just now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I wonder if it's going to end up feeling more Avengers ish. I don't know. We'll see towards out. the end of the film. I kind of feel like Whedon will stick to some sort of, if there's some sort of plan that yeah. well, Snyder I know they don't, has mapped when you're out. Shooting those big budget movies, they don't always shoot like in chronological order. So yeah. Whedon might be shooting scenes like that are picking up the slack he could be doing stuff right now that you're going to see in the first five minutes of the movie right and snyder may have stuff that's appearing at the end so Mm -hmm. yeah it'd be interesting to see if upon knowing that maybe if you find out maybe on like a on the blu-ray release or something if they can show you which scenes were directed by who if you'd be able to tell Mm -hmm. any difference If they do, people will probably be like, "Whoa, I like the Joss Whedon directed <laughs> parts." <but laughs> Those Zack Snyder parts are shit. <laughs> I like, yeah, no, I, I like Zack Snyder. I like him. I don't, I don't care. Yeah, his his Dawn is great. Yeah, it's it's excellent. I mean, probably honestly, for me, more enjoyable than the original. I've watched Zack Snyder's version plenty of times. I've yeah. seen the original maybe twice. I think Snyder's is definitely, it's got a, more of a modern pace. To yeah, it. it's action packed. You know, Romero, like, okay, he's the he's the king of zombies. Like, I fucking get it. Not that big of a fan. Like his movies are, you know, they're about they're kind of the Walking Dead. They're about like the humans, really. Yeah, and. Maybe it's just been a while since I've, like, watched them. Mm-hmm. But I just, I don't, I've never been, like, blown away by a Romero movie. Have you seen Day of the Dead? Yeah. The one in the bunker? Yes. And, yeah, 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 yeah. I have it. I okay. Have it. I think that's, like, I think he considers that kind of his magnum opus of that series, mm-hmm. anyway. But. I like, would probably I, agree with 
I don't know. I I really like all the Romero movies, but I, I really I think that I put um, Land of the Dead up higher than a lot of people do. Like I genuinely love that movie. I think it's great. oh yeah, you know, like the the newer one. Yeah, yeah. Which is supposed to chronologically follows Do- uh, Day of the Dead. Yeah, and I remember some people being butt hurt at like um, Big Daddy figuring out the like the starts, gun. Yeah, and then they actually like kind of start using weapons at some point. Yeah, not. It's not like they're an army and they're like, come on, guys. It's, but like that rudimentary figuring shit out, which was a direct callback to what happens in Day of the Dead when they're teaching Bub how to do shit down. With you know, like the CD player. Yeah. And he shoots uh, Rhodes at the uh-huh. end, you know. So it's like people completely gloss over that fact. And it's like, oh, it was cool then, but... We're just going to bitch about it because it's new. I don't know. Uh, People are... I read an interesting article the other day that a friend of mine posted uh, about new wave horror. They're calling it (laughs) post-horror. But basically, like, the Polanskis and stuff are, like, starting to come back Uh and make it into theaters. Like, indie horror is is like all that cerebral stuff has a, at one point migrated to indie horror mm-hmm. and now it's like sleeping back into the mainstream. Uh, but it, the interesting thing about the article is it only mentioned it in passing, but it said that horror is the most profitable genre to make a movie in. And I just find it interesting that, uh, it can be so profitable and it's so well received by so many people and so much effort goes into making these movies. And then like, it's not regarded in the high art of like the Oscars and you know, and all that kind of stuff. Like they're just like, no, it's a horror movie. Yeah. But yeah, horror movies make more money than any other kind of movie. Well, I feel like the everything well, I won't say everything. It seems like most things that go into like the Oscar discussion are movies that like just maybe it's unfair, but the first word that comes to mind is boring. <laughs> like, <laughs> like if your movie, if your movie's boring, you might have a good chance at an Oscar this yeah. year. Again, I know that's that's unfair. It's not true across the board by any means, but you know. I see movies that win Best Picture some years, and it's just like, I watch a trailer, and it's like, I have absolutely (laughs) no interest in sitting down and watching this. Zero. And it's not because it's not like an action movie or some shit. It's like, you know, I like a good story. Yeah. Something like The Revenant, Mm -hmm. you know, an amazing movie. I don't have to have an action movie or a horror movie or a superhero movie. Um, I love La La Land. Great. Fantastic movie. But I just... These movies where it's like, I guess, where maybe it's a very slow unfolding of... A study of the human conscious, like... Yeah, just this very complicated relationship between a father and his estranged <laughs> son, you know? And it's, it's like like anything, literally anything Daniel Day-Lewis is yeah. in. <laughs> and I'm just like... I remember watching, and I I was young at the time, so I might be able to sit through it now Mm -hmm. uh, and appreciate it more, but I remember when There Will Be Blood was, like, the big fucking to-do, you know, and I sat down, and I got maybe 15 minutes into it, and I was like, this movie fucking sucks, like, turned it off, like, didn't even finish it, didn't even try. Yeah. I mean, I I have to go back, I think... uh, before that or right after that, I have to go back and watch No Country for Old Men because I think that might have won Best Picture. But the first time I saw it, I was very confused and didn't mm-hmm. particularly care for it. Like, it's a good movie, yeah. and I, there's more to it than uh, that I would be excited about that would excite me. Like, I love his air cannon, you yeah. know, killing people and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's a very intriguing movie, and I love like Silence of the Lambs and the Hannibal movies, so it kind of falls into that category. 
But the first time I watched it, I remember being very confused, and it was I was off put by the movie because I was so confused. But again, I was a little bit younger. I probably watched it when it came like mm-hmm. the year that it won or whatever. Yeah. yeah, I think that gets pretty intense towards the end. Yeah, I I think so too. I only saw it one time, but yeah, I for some reason I feel like the Golden Globes are always a little more open to your non-traditional Oscar winners, you know. Right. A movie could win Best Picture at the Golden Globes that would be probably laughed out of the room at the Oscars, you know. Yeah. Just... I don't know. I there's a there's a video that circulates Facebook about the room and I can't remember <laughs> what exactly they describe it as but they talk about like these things that exist outside of like basically what the oscars are but it's like society's perception of pop culture Mm -hmm. and there are things that exist outside of pop culture and those things are like horror movies like uh gore movies trash movies and like porn and like you know other stuff but it's like there are things outside of that realm and it's like i remember just watching the video and feeling really cool that like to be so into horror movies and but it's not even still today like it's not considered like a societal norm Mm -hmm. a horror movie isn't you know despite how much money they make and despite that it's like the only genre of movie save for superhero movies that have their own fucking conventions yeah like the community of people that enjoy horror movies is like the only community Mm -hmm. You know, there's no action, you know, action movie community that like has action conventions where you get Jean-Claude. Those those people would show up probably at like a Comic-Con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe even at a horror convention where you get that crossover. Yeah. But yeah, there's no, or you know what, sci-fi fans Mm -hmm. have their own shit going on sometimes. You know, Sometimes you I get, don't think they're on the level necessarily that because I don't think you necessarily have sci-fi conventions. You have Star Trek conventions and Star Wars conventions, mm-hmm. and Doctor Who conventions. Maybe I'm sure that somewhere there's somewhere there's got to be Doctor well, Who conventions. I know because they, I I even saw that there's uh they do like a Transformers convention in Kentucky do they? every year. It's like the biggest Transformers uh, show like that. It's just all Transformers shit. That would be kind of cool. Which, yeah. And you, a lot of like the voice actors from the series show up. That would be cool. Uh, but, yeah, so they're, you know, they've got their they've got their things. Yeah. But nobody, even superhero movies, I feel like because they're derivative of comic books, mm-hmm. comic books have their thing. They've got conventions and whatever, but like, and the movies are just a part of that. Do you think there's like a once a year and like, um, some very, uh, I don't know what it would be. It'd have to be the, it'd have to have to be the most hipster laden community probably in the country. Maybe, maybe in Portland, Portland, Portland or in Austin. Yeah. Maybe like a uh, like drama fest, where it's just like dramatic movie. Yeah, and <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like romance, romantic comedies don't have conventions. No, nobody. You know, if they do, like um, maybe one exists. Yeah, but Rachel McAdams is not showing up at a romantic comedy fest. You know, or uh, like I don't, I don't, I like how many fucking genres of movie are there like even just comedy movies Mm -hmm. in general like they have festivals for stand-up comedians yeah and a lot of comedians appear in the movies Mm -hmm. you know like zach galifianakis or something like that but you're not going to get a comedy convention where like 
broken lizard is showing up in full force, you mm-hmm. know, to sign autographs. With a bunch of booths just selling, like, comedy movies. Yeah. And comedy memorabilia. Yeah. Because there's not it's really... It's not a thing. It's not a thing. <laughs> Fucking horror mem- memorabilia is a thing. Yeah. Even... Nobody walks around with a Pineapple Express t-shirt on, <laughs> but, like, I'll goddamn walk around with a Rosemary's Baby shirt on, like, any day, you know? There has to be... A pineapple express oh i'm t-shirt. sure there's i'm sure there are but like it's They're one of those things where like for them. no and you're not it's one of those things that you buy when you find it on mm-hmm. the bottom rack at kohl's yeah you know like on sale mm-hmm. and it says like oh, i don't even know any quotes from the movie like it's been a while it's got like a crucifix joint on it mm-hmm. or something and a pineapple uh but that's something you buy from the bottom rack of Kohl's when it's on sale. Whereas, like, obviously with, like, Cavity Colors and whatnot, I will spend close to $30 on a new t-shirt just because it has the mutilator on it. Yeah. And then even within the, even within the horror community, you've got, like, specific conventions just for, like, The Walking Dead with like Walker, Walker Stalker, Stalker has yep. its own convention for one particular title in yep. the horror community. Yep. That's grown to such a degree that you can fill a huge convention center with well, I don't want to say all because it's not a hundred percent but But there are a lot of yeah just booths dedicated to nothing but the walking dead. Right. And this, the the celebrity guests at Walker Stalker are yeah. all involved with The Walking Dead. Yeah. The great the greatest thing about horror movie conventions is that everybody shows up. Like at one point or another, you can have like bottom barrel B movie actors who like have done one movie and they're there at the convention promoting it and like they sign every copy that people buy. And, you know, like, they only charge, like, $10 for a Blu-ray and a signature. Mm-hmm. And what, and they give you a free poster, and they sign that, too. And, like, you add them on Facebook, and you find their Instagram and shit like that. And you have, like, that level actor all the way up to, like, Robert Ungland, who is Freddy Cougar. And he goes to, like, multiple conventions a year. And shows up and signs autographs and shakes hands and takes photos and all that kind of shit. And it's just like, there's no... And you just get everybody in between. Yeah. You know? I Kane Hodder fucking goes to more conventions than literally anybody I know. Because you can... I mean, that's how these people are making a living. Yeah. A lot of them. But it's know? so exciting. Yeah. As a fan, like, just imagine if you were just you know had a huge boner for action movies Mm -hmm. and they announced that they were going to do a convention and fucking jason statham was going to be there signing autographs you know and you got to just like wait in line for only like two hours which Mm -hmm. seems like a long time but when you're meeting somebody you really care about wait in line for two hours and you get to fucking shake jason statham's hand and have him sign your copy of transporter three yeah you know like the convention culture is really interesting to me, and I feel I'm, you know, glad. I feel like I've been included in something that's kind of cool that most people will never understand, you know. Just and I and Jess has been to way more without me, but I've been to I've been to my fair share at this point, and it's it's cool to go and see that like there's this there's this traveling band of people a lot of them you'll see with booths at like you know a person will have a booth at like walker stalker and then you'll see them at like another like horror, fan, hound. Like horror hound or like fanboy expo and yeah. you start seeing these crossovers and and they're there selling shit like every time and it's almost like a you know just like a you think of it almost as a circus or a traveling carnival yeah where you pack up your shop and then you're off to the next city and there's a whole thing, just the whole ritual of arriving on this day and then you see everyone putting all their booths up and then, you know, 
and then all the vendors walking around looking at each other's shit before anyone else shows up. Vendors make friends with each other. I mean, there's this dude, I've been to probably like eight or nine horror hounds now, and there's this guy, Joel Robinson, I've never bought one fucking thing from him, but he sets up at every single convention, because he does covers for Scream Factory, as well as like, you know, his own art, and he makes t-shirts and la-di-da, I hate his artwork, I'm not gonna lie. (laughs) But he's there every time, and I know who he is, and I see other vendors going up to him and being like, great to see you, like, Mm -hmm. you know, like, remember the last time, and la-di-da, and and all that kind of stuff. Like, I, the guy that I met at the last convention, um, Vile Consumption, Corey, you know, I follow him on Instagram now, and it's like every couple weeks, it's like, off to blah, 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 off to blah, 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 like, he was just at Day of the Dead last weekend, and now this weekend, he's going up to, uh, Americon Mm -hmm. in Ohio, and I'm like, I don't know what that is, (laughs) what is that? But you're going there and selling horror merch, like, is it a horror con, is it what, but it's called Americon, I don't know. Where is that one? (laughs) <laughs> like Akron or something? I don't know. It sounds It sounded fucking rad. Hmm. Americon. That's so cool. Con culture is the best. Yeah. And it's, you know, and I always like sort of marvel at myself just that I don't even know how I came across uh that horror hound was going to be in Cincinnati. Yeah. Like I I think what happened was a friend of mine way back when posted on Facebook that they weren't able to go to Horror Hound. And I was just like, what's Horror Hound? Yeah. And then it was just like <laughs> you know, and I was just like, holy fuck, like all of these people are going to be in Cincinnati, yeah. like, and then I just happened, you know, I just went. I was just like, I'm going to go to this because I want to meet Sid Haig, and I want to meet Bill Mosley, and I want to meet Philippe Nahon, and all that kind of stuff. And I went and did it, and now it's just like this thing that I do twice a year, every year. All American in Youngstown, Ohio. Youngstown. Oh, I wonder if it's an, it's maybe, oh, let's see. Comic, toy, and art show. Oh. I don't recognize any of the guests. Oh, well. Which is fine, because it seems like a small show. Yeah. But still, all All American. All I know about Youngstown is to be careful. (laughs) 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 My old boss at buybacks was from Youngstown and he just I remember him showing me a picture one time that his brother had texted him and it was like only in Youngstown and it was like a stop sign just like riddled with bullets oh my just God. like that's where is Youngstown where is it is it like near Columbus is it it's north of Columbus okay I think it's about maybe two and a half hours from here I think. Okay. So. In that kind of strange middle area. That weird middle area of Ohio that like no one goes to. Kind of like the southeast of yeah. Ohio. Like what the hell is over there? Yeah. I don't even know. I can't name one city in southeast Ohio. I, I can tell you one just because my great grandparents lived there but it was just like really really small farm town yeah with like you know literally there was one police officer <laughs> that like he was just the sheriff yeah and, like, that was it it was just like one of those it was like little police station on the corner like next to the drugstore with like one cell oh my god literally like andy griffith show yeah style i mean but that's I think that's the kind of shit you get in that region of Ohio. It's just... Yeah, I don't... I, I know nothing about Southeast Ohio. Yeah. Like, if you are on just, like, the 
the east side of Columbus. I don't know. It's just like there. Seventy five goes like diagonally, more or less. I think you you kind of cross into onto other highways eventually. Yeah. But the main highways that go diagonally <laughs> through Ohio from like southwest to northeast. Yeah. Because isn't like Toledo, Cleveland northeast ish. Yeah, Toledo, and then I think Cleveland is further east. Or is Toledo? Toledo might be further west, and then there's Akron. Yeah, in then, kind of the middle. Yeah, you know, like Cleveland. Cleveland is sort of on the east. Mm-hmm. So like you you've got stuff. Yeah. On the northeastern side, but like, I just like middle middle Ohio, like like southwest center in Columbus and northeast, but like anything that follows seventy five or seventy. Yeah. Is like there's stuff there. Yeah. But then the whole rest of the state. Northwest Ohio? What the fuck is over there? Southeast Ohio? What the fuck (laughs) is over there? I have no fucking idea. Just probably a bunch of places like I just mentioned, I would imagine. Like the southeastest I have been is, uh, uh, I went to Shawnee State in Portsmouth, Ohio. I've been to Portsmouth yeah. several times because my stepdad, my ex-stepdad's family lived there. Yeah? Yeah. D- I just mean, same it's thing. just nothing. There's yeah. nothing there at all. It's just buildings and a school. Yeah. Just f- fucking nothing. I mean, my school, it was like Shawnee, Floodwall, Ohio River, Kentucky. That's like where... What did you say you went to Portsmouth for? School, college. You went there, actually? Yeah, yeah okay. like, I was there for a year. Oh, okay. It was terrible. <laughs> you, did you, I guess you lived on campus? Yes. Yes, I did. So, was there, like, was there anything around you at all? How far we, was, like, the nearest Best Buy, or, like... We often spent time at Walmart, which was about 15 minutes away. You know, what's funny is in Winchester, where my great-grandparents lived, going to the city was we would drive about 20 minutes to a place called Cherry Fork. (laughs) And they had the Walmart, and there was a McDonald's there. Oh, my God. And it was like, that's like a big deal. You're going to the Walmart Mm -hmm. and McDonald's. (laughs) There was a GameStop um, in the same plaza as the Walmart, Mm -hmm. uh, but it was very small. Like, they had enough stuff. I bought something there one time. Uh I think they had working demo machines, so, like, that was, you know, a rarity. I might have told you this a while ago. Another thing, we're how how are we giving Portsmouth so much airtime? I don't know, who cares? (laughs) Like, I, this is, you know, oh, by the way, guys, I was thinking about this earlier. Sorry we're not doing, like, the 80s stuff like we were going to be doing, but, like, We've just had a lot going on. Yeah, this is, give us a break. Just hang with us. <laughs> just hang, hang with us. We'll be we'll be back to that. <laughs> but like right now, we're just drinking and hanging out. Yeah, and we're talking about Portsmouth. Yeah, Portsmouth, is, Ohio. It's important. It's terrible. Um, but like, I stumbled upon this article from like the late eighteen hundreds from like the Portsmouth newspaper. Yeah, and it was describing like. Um, a wrestling match that took place in town a real wrestling match and it like the setup was this dude i don't remember how it happened he ended up uh some guys got into it i believe because one of them had killed the other one's dog (laughs) on accident okay and this and so the guy who had his dog killed challenged the other guy to a wrestling match like outside of the local saloon or okay. the pub or whatever they had. And so then it talked about the eyewitness who was there when it happened. When it started at like, you know, 11 in the morning, they began their wrestling match. <laughs> and the stipulation was that like, if the guy whose dog was killed won, then the other guy was going to have to reimburse him for the cost of a new dog. 
because he lived on a farm. It was like his farm dog. Right. And so if the other guy won, then he wasn't going to have to pay anything. It's like, all right, we're, let's fucking wrestle. And they started their wrestling match at like 11 in the morning in front of like two people. And then it described in detail like the entire match, like what happened, where they went, that it like moved across the street oh my God. into like another yard that they fought in like, you know, on the side of a barn. And, you know, the, the grappling lasted for this long or whatever. And it was like, by the end, it was like, four hours long Holy before shit. someone finally won uh, i guess by the other guy just giving up and saying he'd had enough and like the entire town had congregated <laughs> around these two oh like my god <laughs> and it was like yeah but I, I i read that and it was it was just like a collection of very early accounts of professional wrestling and like wrestling matches that had taken place across the country and that was like an official report that happened in their newspaper <laughs> just that's like, crazy yeah i saw i remember seeing saw six at the theater in portsmouth and that was the only me the whole year that i was in school that was the only movie i went to the theater to see scratch that ninja assassin also saw that in theaters. I don't even know what that is. You've never seen Ninja Assassin? Oh my god. No. <laughs> it's like... Oh man. I haven't watched it in so long. But... It's it's one of those movies where it's fucking exactly what the title says. There are ninjas and they <laughs> fucking assassinate people. <laughs> the whole movie. Dude, it's so good. I can't believe you haven't seen Ninja Assassin. No, I've never seen it. It was like a... It was a, it like a kind of shit-tastic, just shit show action movie? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's gory. There, mm-hmm. You know, there's fucking ninjas. Like, yeah. But it's it's awesome. The dude who plays, like, the main ninja, his name's just Rain. Like, his whole... The whole... His whole name. That's it. Just Rain. Are there any famous actors or actresses in it? It's been a while since i've seen it i don't think so i think it's just like a bunch of japanese people and like one white chick and it was so good like it's i think it was directed by the wachowski brothers really i think so Hmm. i think i could be wrong uh assassin yeah god i can't believe you haven't heard of ninja assassin I remember when that movie was coming out and watching previews for it, and I was just like, I have to fucking see this movie. <laughs> what I was the have theater to... like in Portsmouth? Um, they have like a Danbury. It wasn't that. Was it? it wasn't that. It wasn't a Danbury. It was like no. a Portsmouth theater. Not like an AMC. No. Or a show. Not at the or... time. No. It wasn't that bad. It was like a. Thank you. Mm-hmm. It was like a step above a dollar saver but it wasn't like an amc or a rave yeah just you have video danbury middletown yeah danbury middletown which is kind of like meh yeah it's like a fine place to go see a movie but danbury does have probably my favorite popcorn besides the lebanon theater really have you been to that one here in lebanon once i saw i am number four there we saw thor there Thor Dark World. Did we? Yeah, we went together and saw Thor Dark World there. That memory is like totally gone. You hate me. (laughs) (laughs) It was you and me, Jess, and I'm pretty sure, uh, I'm pretty sure I was dating Lindsay when that came out, and we went and saw Thor the Dark World over there. In Lebanon. Yeah. That's weird. Uh, It had to have been the second time I saw it then. Because I never see superhero movies there the first time. Probably. I we, I'm pretty sure we've been there together maybe one or two other times as well. I remember specifically, though, very specifically, seeing the movie I Am Number 4 there with my friend Kara a long time, when it came out a long time ago. And I remember just like, it was not the theater that is the same as a Danbury Dollar Saver. It was the theater where you were like this close to the oh, screen, yeah, like the really the one that's right off the side, yeah, like right inside the front door. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, "What is happening?" <laughs> like, 
are we seriously like seriously (laughs) and when we sat in the movie was fucking awful yeah first of all but i was just like the whole time i was like i don't know what is going on here (laughs) They added all those in, like, after I started dating Jess. Yeah. When I first started coming to Lebanon and we would see movies over there, it was just those two big theaters. And then they added in, like, the additional four, those, like, smaller, almost just home theater style. Yeah, home theater style. But, you know, like, for $5, I'm just like, okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, we went to see, we saw It Comes at Night at the Dollar Saver on Bargain Night, so it was only $3 oh. total for two of us. Not bad. You don't remember this poster? I do. That looks familiar. Yeah, I, I just, I've never seen it. Oh, my the, God. I feel like if you wouldn't have mentioned it, I would have gone the never, rest of my life without never knowing. thinking of it again. Oh, yes. God. I want to go home and watch Ninja Assassin. There's a whole, oh, man, it's so good. I'm not going to spoil it for you. You need to watch it. Is there like a subculture fan base for it? I hope so now. I haven't (laughs) thought about this movie in forever. I wonder... uh, Naomi Harris? No, there's like literally nobody in it. Hey, Kyle just messaged me and sent me a link about the uh, Shout Factory. (laughs) Dawn of the Dead. (laughs) Is it Dawn of the Dead or Land of the Dead? Dawn, Dawn of the Dead. Tell him yeah. Land is being made too. I'm sure he knows. But yeah, I went. Uh, Trinity posted a photo of him meeting Sharon Needles. Yeah, and uh, he was wearing a cavity color shirt, and I was just like, "I see you. I see you wearing <laughs> that cavity color shirt." And I was like, "I'm not gonna take credit for sure." Yeah, but. I, I wonder if he knows about cavity colors because of me. Maybe so. Because I post about it all the time. Could be. He's pretty steeped in the culture himself, though. So yeah, it's he might know. That he might know. It could I have just mean. been a converging. Yeah. But you might be the one who turned him on to it. So. Who knows? I'm pretty sure I'm the one who told. I'm the one who told him to shop at diabolique uh, dvd.com mm-hmm. because when reanimator the arrow reanimator was up for pre-order it was like thirty dollars on amazon and seventeen dollars on diabolique mm. and i was like you should check here for your pre-orders the re- have you seen the reanimator uh arrow release no fantastic i don't think it's out yet i think it comes out very very soon but it looks amazing arrow uk is also having a sale july 19th through 30th so a long sale yeah and my plan (laughs) Because my parents were going to get me Foo Fighters tickets for my birthday. They were going to try to surprise me, but then tickets for the Nosebleeds were like $130. And I was like, understandable, plus not the biggest Foo Fighters fan. Love them. Love Dave Grohl. I would have rather... Great show. I have been. Yeah. I'm sure it would be. Honestly, would have rather seen U2 on their 30th anniversary Joshua Tree tour. Mm -hmm. Also probably really expensive. So... Since I'm not getting those tickets, which I'm totally fine with, my plan is to (laughs) buy a bunch of Arrow movies during the sale and then be like, hey, if you guys don't get me a free region Blu-ray player for my birthday, I can't watch these (laughs) movies. (laughs) What's the sale exactly? Do you know? Is it just going to be a bunch of shit? I think it's just going to be a sale, but they're also redesigning their website, so sometimes they like like to clear things out. Because I feel like... It's going to be hilarious if the thing that finally pushes me over the edge to get a region-free Blu-ray player is if this sale has, like, the burbs for 50% off. It might. Because yeah. I will do it. Yeah. Because I want that I want that, that Blu-ray. Blu-ray. But I don't, I don't want to just get it and not be able to see any of the extra shit on it because yeah. 
That'd be a bummer. So yeah, I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna like buy when the sale starts. I'm gonna buy something. Yeah. Like, I don't care what. I'm just gonna tell my parents. I'm gonna be like, hey, because I asked my mom. She said, you know, she was trying to like surprise me. She was all like, hey, keep a f- a day free in October. You know, we're working on your birthday present. And I was like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. And I was like, if it doesn't work out, I want a free region Blu-ray player. And she was like, how much? And I was like, they're like one fifty. And uh. And now that I'm, you know, it's happening, yeah, I'm going to buy some movies and just be like, you know, I'm going to ask for a birthday, like, you just give me that, I'm going to watch these movies that I bought. Otherwise, I can't watch these movies that I bought. I was just telling Lazarus last night, speaking of, like, buying things, I'm already projecting about when this album is just, like, blowing up. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, I was like, when I start making a lot of money off of my, my music... I was like, I'm going to buy you this thing you can put on your face and you'll be able to like play Minecraft in real life. The vibe. Yeah. My, I'm talking like, to, I talked to a friend of mine, um, my friend that called me a couple times while we were recording, Sean, I used to work with him. Um, he just bought a Vive yeah. for himself and I was like, oh, because yeah, he's a lot younger than me. Mm-hmm. So I think he is probably like 21 or 22 so he's right in that age where he like he just moved out and he like has a shitload of money and he's just like blowing it Mm -hmm. that's when i made that's when i bought all my movies yeah when i was that age so but yeah he just bought himself a vibe and i was like i just messed around with one of those i was like good for you man because those are fucking awesome (laughs) they are (laughs) like i don't even i don't even need to try the oculus Mm mm-hmm Especially after what Josh told me. They don't have motion controls yet. Right. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to hate on my PSVR or anything, but, like, unless there's an exclusive for the PSVR that I couldn't get on the Vive if I had one. Yeah. I would go with the Vive every time. It just. The Vive was cool. It was cool. Yeah. But. Definitely. And you know what? And we talked, you know, we talked about this and we were so sure it wasn't going to happen, but how much shit has come out for the PSVR now that it's released? Like I don't even almost nothing. I mean like Resident Evil. Yeah, Resident Evil is the biggest budget game to but be I'll, released. But I'll tell you this, like I was banking on Kojima putting Death Stranding on on the VR because uh-huh. I I've seen him talk about him thinking that VR is like the future of gaming, and there have been rumors that it will be on the VR. So it's like, you know, if that's all I get out of it, I don't give Worth a shit. It. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, and it's not like I haven't had fun with it. It's just, it oh, is, I totally agree. Like I, if I had one, I would fucking play Battlezone all goddamn day yeah. long. Because that game is fucking sweet, perfect VR experience, mm-hmm. like, amazing, you know? But, and I would probably take the time to get good at rigs, because I think that's really cool, yeah. too. I, and I've got rigs, I, I, I want to play it, but I just, I haven't sat down and done it yet. Yeah. It's another one of those things where it's like, it's a little bit more of a production to sit down and, and do a VR game, even if it you're is. doing like the Vive or something, it's, it's not just... Like the switch where you pick it up and, and just start playing it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But beyond that, I do think that uh, the VR did not catch on the way I initially thought that it would. I think it'll take a little time. Yeah. For the the price and then not... You know what's going to sell the VR is just people coming over to their friends' houses and trying it. Mm-hmm. Because it's going to be the ones who put the money down first, and the people who are skeptics are going to try it, even if it is the PSVR, and they'll be like, okay, that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. But like with the Vive, even something simple like that arcade thing, it was like... The, um, the Valve Arcade? No, the like the actual arcade. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was fucking sweet. Like, I would just, I can imagine just... If, even if I was by myself, if I had like a 12 pack and I was just drunk, just going around this arcade, just fucking around. Like, yeah. The shit I was doing, you know, 
you just walk over behind the bar and act like you're pouring drinks and just throw them across the room. It's just yeah. like, you're, you just can be a complete dick and there are no consequences. Right. <laughs> I would play that, uh, the one game with the, you shot the drones down and you yeah. would like put it behind your back and get a shield. I love the one where it's like, you're the controller the is like the toy. Yeah, that was fun too. And like move it around. The ship is your hand basically. So yeah. It's, all of it was so fun. I loved the archery in the Valve playroom. Yeah. The archery one was great. If you haven't looked into the Vive, if you're considering a VR game, a VR platform, and you have a computer that's capable of, of running games, then I would give that a look. Because yeah, it's, Vive, it's all the really way. Cool. That's cool. That's... And Josh was saying, that's what I was telling Lazarus is the Minecraft where he says like his favorite which I can see how it would probably be really cool to just like have these life size Legos that you feel like you're picking up and like yeah. stacking and you know that would be sweet mm. well we've uh, gone a little longer here than we have the past few but yeah, well, okay. I'm a lightweight, so I'm like tipsy. That's right. <laughs> After three beers, <laughs> which is why we've gone so long. Everybody in the club getting tipsy. <laughs> Everybody in the club getting tipsy. I remember Who was that? that? I have no fucking idea. I hate songs like that, but I remember them. Yeah. Everybody in the club getting tipsy. I I have to Facebook about Ninja Assassin now because you don't remember it. I feel like everybody in the club getting tipsy is in the same category with like it's getting hot in here. So yeah, that's you know, Nelly. Like Nelly had a career though. He did, yeah. But this that style of song. Oh yeah. So take off all your clothes. I want to take my clothes off. Well, you can't do that at a club because you get thrown Have you ever off. heard Weird Al's version? No. It's called Trash Day. Uh-huh. It's, um, I know all the words to it, but now I, of course, now I can't remember. Uh, but, like, it's, it's all, yeah, it's just all about how his apartment is just, like, overflowing with trash, <laughs> and he's gonna take the trash out. It's so great. It's, I, I want to, sometime, I want to karaoke hot in here, but then sing the Weird Al lyrics over top of it. <laughs> I have, um, made a goal to do in a former the next time I go out and do karaoke in former yeah from snow snow you don't know that song no I'm gonna break the rules here and see oh god if we don't get caught we probably won't no one listens to this podcast <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we'll get caught let me see I can't believe you don't know Informer. I can't believe you don't know Ninja Assassin. <laughs> well, I don't know why Spotify has to install every time I open it. It's just, um, it's a little inconvenient. Um,. <laughs> Funny. Let's That's see. Funny. Snow. Searching for snow. There he is. So the musician is Snow. Yeah. Okay. And the song is Informer. Just like the guy in, uh, just like the guy in Ninja Assassin is Rain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all coming together. I'm sure you know this song. Here you go. It's 
the groove. <laughs> yeah, I know this song. I want to do this next time we go to karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go like soon. We need to we need to hit it up for real. I just have to learn all the words. Yeah. You know what we really should do what? for karaoke? We should learn a back and forth for a Beastie Boys song and do one together. That would be cool. We'd, we'd, um, we'd have to find one. I feel like there's probably one that only features two of them. Well, I mean, or we could get a third three. person. We could get a third. But Andrew's, gonna... Andrew's a big Beastie Boys mark. Yeah? He loves Beastie Boys. But so, when Andrew karaoke with us. He's done it before. Has he? Yeah. He actually did uh, Sabotage one time. Yeah, Andrew can be our third. We just, we have to find a song then. Should we do like a crowd favorite? Yeah, I think so, we yeah. Always, like, I think we could always do crowd Fight for Your Right. Fight <laughs> for Your Right, that'd be funny. That would be funny. Everyone knows that song. Or Intergalactic. Intergalactic is, I love Intergalactic. Yeah, Intergalactic is great. That we could have so we could prepare to do both of them. Uh huh. If everyone like got on board for the first, first one, you do the other one. Go back up later in the night. Yep. Be so awesome. Put a tip jar out. We need to find we need to find a karaoke place and do karaoke again. God, it's so fun. Are they still doing it, at Whiskey Girl? I don't know. I don't think so. I could never get on board after the one guy left. Kevin? The guy who was doing it when we first started, I think. The guy who was doing it when we first started, I think his name was Kevin. He was really cool. Yeah. The guy, Tim, who did it after Kevin, he got cool. Like, he was weird at first, but eventually, like, I didn't go, we didn't go as often, obviously, but I went a number of times, and he was cool. Like, if you frequented... He was really cool, um, but I don't. Th- I don't think they do karaoke anymore. It's too bad. I know. It's so fun. However, I I'd have to look it up because I saw a post one time about a bar that was gonna do like basically they were gonna be a karaoke bar mm-hmm. in Dayton or whatever. They were gonna do karaoke like Wednesday through Saturday or. Tuesday through Saturday or something like yeah. literally every night of the week they were going to do karaoke Blind Bob's does it on Wednesdays do they I think uh, did you ever go to Therapy Cafe they used to do maybe, it down there too maybe one time I think I've been to Therapy one time I haven't been there for years I don't even know if they're still open I think when I was when I was with that the chick with the friend that I just saw at MJ's the other night. Yeah. I think we went to therapy one time after mask. And I did a lemon drop shot. And that's all I remember. Yeah. Well. <laughs> that's all I remember of that place. Mm. Did Jess bartend at therapy? No, just at Club Vex. Club Vex. Right. Well, it was called The Pearl when she started there. Mm. I don't know if you ever went there when it was The Pearl never went there when it was vex oh they did a sweet 80s night they had an 80s night and then they also had a goth night and i used to love going to both of them <laughs> goth that night would be cool they just played like all it was like new wave and fucking they would play like the cure and the smiths and mm, yeah nine inch nails somebody which... did hole in the wall did an emo night recently I really want... I should have gone. I really should have gone. It seemed really fun. Have you ever been around goth dancing before? What kind of goth dancing? Just people... That's what they would call... The dancing you would see at goth night at Vex was yeah. a lot of people goth dancing. Just... It's a very interesting style of dance. It's uh, not what you'll see on hip-hop night. I'll say that. Is it the one where they're all just like... Mm, 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 
you get some of that, but then you also get people doing like the uh, where they just like sway back and forth, just like swaying and yeah, yeah head down, just uh -huh. yeah. But then some people would be getting a bit more exaggerated. But it's it's like mix. it's like those it's like those <laughs> idiot hippies that do poi. Yeah, but it's like more like stiff. Yeah. And like Usually, very just like hit, 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 hit. It'd be like a lot of people doing the kind of like, you know, the swaying, shoegazing, kind of like flowy shit. Right. And then there'd be like one guy who was like JT and grandma's boy, you know, like doing uh, the, the crazy stuff. You know? Yeah. Yeah. A fun mix. Fun mix. Yeah. I, I think, uh. nights at bars would be super fun i'm like really bummed i didn't go to emo night i should have obviously they just played like mcr and the used all fucking night it would have yeah. been amazing tomorrow when i go out with nancy we're gonna go dressed as 80s as possible though so nice. probably find a bar that has you know one of those like touch tunes jukeboxes mm -hmm. just 80s music <laughs> so i will pay like ten dollars <laughs> To just have like 12 80s songs in a row. Just take it over. Yeah. And then just Vogue. Yeah. Like in the. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna. That's what's gonna happen. It's gonna be amazing. Well. This was a good show, I think. It was a fun show. If you don't think so, then why are you. Maybe still we here? can just change up our aesthetic and instead of like talking about 80s stuff, we can just get drunk and talk. <laughs> <laughs> like from now. Because like, you know, before we just like, beer me. You're like, yeah, one beer. Mm, yeah. It's so good. But Well, we. Yeah, we. I mean, we went through one that we didn't mention. That was the uh, Porch Rocker. Yeah. From Sam Adams. Mm -hmm. Tart and refreshing. Mm hmm. And then we moved on to the summer, the Samuel Adams Summer Ale, which is a lemon wheat ale. So we have had three beer me's tonight. And they've all been pretty summery beers. Yeah. The yeah. rocker was also, it's uh, more lemony is the rocker. The more rocker. lemony, less snicket. Yeah. <laughs> summer ale is a bit heavier than the porch rocker. Summer ale. <laughs> Makes me feel fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that can be. I mean, or we can talk about 80s stuff. I don't care. Or we could do both. Or we could do both. Get drunk and talk about He Man. Yeah. One of these days, you know, just like one of these days we're going to review Old Man Logan, one of these days we're going to talk about <laughs> He Man's first season or whatever. Old Man Logan, I forgot about that. <laughs> That was like every episode of Super Fanatics. Next week Next we're going to do Old Man Logan. <laughs> if you guys never caught on, that was intentional. We mm -hmm. didn't do Old Man Logan on purpose. Yeah, we just we just said that. We were tricking you to get you to come back. Because somebody had your Old Man Logan. Has your Old Man Logan. Yeah. Bob? It's Bob or Andrew. Someone. Your dad? <laughs> my dad. <laughs> I feel like... No, my dad has my Blackest Night. That's right. My dad's had Blackest Night for like five years. Oh my god. You need to get those back. I know. Get them graded. They're probably worth something. Just like, read this. It's really good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Never read it. <laughs> I have some of your stuff. I need to give you your stuff back. Chefs, thank you for hanging out. And um, if you haven't... Um, you know, sign up for our email list right now because you will get the, what did you call it? The three song demo drop. Yeah. The three song demo drop or the, the free song, three, three song free drop. Free. Yeah. Free, three song drop. They're not, demos. they're not demos. They're completed tracks. You'll get it. Uh, a free three song album drop. It's like an EP, but not as many songs the three p the three p why don't we why didn't we call it that like why know. didn't we come up god damn it the three p if you add your email to our mailing list you'll get your free three p demo drop not demo tracks yeah full song real album tracks badass <sighs> that won't be released you can't just go and stream these anywhere right now oh my god so um yeah Thanks. Yep. Thanks. Bye.
hope you guys enjoyed that. We're about to get out of here for the week. Yep. Um, we've uh, imbibed a few beers this time after going... Man, it's probably been at least five or six podcasts since we've done a Beer Me. It's been a while, because we didn't do any while we were at Dawn's. No? We didn't do any while we were recording. We probably, you know, when we started doing the 80s, like, exclusive stuff, like, hitting 80s topics, we yeah. fell off the Beer Me train, which isn't good. So we made up for three. Maybe next week we'll do another three. <laughs> I don't have any problem with that. To make up for. Beer me's fun. We're going to do a shitload of beer me's tomorrow. We are. Yeah. Maybe it would be fun to do next week's cast live from Jimmy Buffett's. I would be so down. Tomorrow. We'll have so many people that we can just call over. To just, yeah, yeah. like we need to be a little yeah. isolated. Yeah. Just like sit in the car. Yeah. And have the thing running. Yeah. But just like, hey, come over and say yeah. hi on the podcast. Yeah. Oh my God. Let's fucking you, do it. You're not mad at me or anything? <laughs> <laughs> okay, give me a kiss. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Mm, mm. oh. It's my favorite part of that album. Like, <laughs> fuck all the music we wrote. Yeah. That sound bite is my favorite part. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so maybe, maybe next week you'll get a live podcast from the Jimmy Buffett tailgate. Yeah. Uh, but until then... <sighs> Uh, make sure you check us out all across the internet. Uh, start by visiting us at our website, superdivorceme.com. While you're there, make sure you add your email to our email list. Because guess what? You're going to get three fucking brand new songs if you do that. It'll be spread out over a couple days, but you know that's because we're trying to get you to click on our emails. Yeah. Uh, but three brand new, fully complete, all done songs from our new album, which releases in September. Spoiler alert. Um, which day? You don't know yet. You don't you, know yet. Unless you've been around since last September. Uh-huh. Because we called the date about a year ago. Yeah, so go listen to our old podcast, fuckers. It's there. Anyways, uh, you can also find us on Facebook slash Facebook.com slash SuperDivorce. Instagram at Super Divorce Band, Snapchat at Super Divorce, Twitter at Super Divorce. Uh, you can find me on social media somewhere on Facebook. You know, good luck with that. And uh, you can find me on Instagram at Bender Butt. And you can find me on your various social media platforms by just searching for Nicholas Villars. And if you find me, that means I'm there. And if you don't finally find me, then that finally means that I'm finally not there. Yeah. So uh, that's about all I have to say about that. So uh, we will see you next week, chefs. Bye-bye. Super divorce.